Pfizer, in theory, it leaves her ready to go to Brussels as soon as she thinks she's going to get some sort of sympathetic hearing to try and get this major concession on the Irish backstop. But to talk about that and other things, I'm joined here by two MPs, Pauline Latham, a Conservative and a strong supporter of Brexit, and Rupert Huck, a Labour MP, who would like a second referendum. We may talk about that in a moment. But first, Pauline, you voted, I imagine, for the uh, <laughs> crucial Brady Amendment yes. last night. But what have you voted for? You voted for something that has already been rejected several times by the EU. Well, no, because what we've done this time is send a message to the EU that we are behind the, the Prime Minister and we want her to get a deal that we can back. So she's got to go over there now and create this deal with the European Union and come back and then put it to us again. But these alternative arrangements that were discussed in, uh, that have been discussed and that were actually in the amendment, what do they amount to? No one seems to be able to put their finger on it. Well, it gives her the opportunity to say that the Commons is behind me now, which it wasn't before. Two weeks ago, she lost badly. So this time, the Commons is behind her. So she's got more power to her elbow when she's negotiating. And she's got to get a deal. She's got to change the backstop. She's got to get it in writing. It's no good having it in warm words. It's got to be in the agreement. OK, Rupert, Rupert Huck, your uh, leader has just gone in for the first time today to have talks uh, with the Prime Minister. So is he going to swing in behind the Prime Minister and try and help the country get a deal now? I'd have loved to have been a fly on the wall there. I don't precisely know what happened. I think the meeting is over now. But look, two weeks ago, that wasn't just a defeat. It was the biggest defeat ever in our Mother of Parliament. And yesterday night, it was a kind of narrowish squeaking home win. But you're right, we do not know what alternative arrangements mean. We just know their alternative and their arrangements. So, I mean, I don't have any faith in sort of a blank check to Theresa May, especially when in Brussels they've said this morning in every language, nous allons pas renégocier cet accord. They keep We're not going to negotiate. It's closed. <laughs> this deal is final. So, I mean, I don't know. I think it seems like a last throw of the dice, sort of desperate thing to get Good-hearted MPs but like calling to vote for her. But what is the Labour Party position? Because Jeremy Corbyn says we need to be part of a customs union. That doesn't mean leaving the EU, does it? Well, I mean, the thing is, the problem where Theresa May has gone wrong is all these red lines that she's become a prisoner of. So it leaves her very little room for manoeuvre. So, yeah, our position is that we want a customs union, we want to be close to the single market. But she's kind of so tied herself up in knots. So, Paul, what, do you think, what do you think of that position? Ever. Well, they don't want to leave. I mean, that's the truth of it. They want to go against what the people of this country have said. And they've given us a clear message that... They do want us to leave, and we've got to deliver that. And it's not easy. It's really not easy. But Brussels has to negotiate now. They've not negotiated anything. They've just said no. Well, you, think one more said. you think one more heave on the British side and suddenly Brussels yeah. will crumble? No, I don't think it's that simple. But having said that, they do always leave it to the very last minute. Any negotiation they have, it's... it's quarter past midnight when they make a decision and they actually finally come to an agreement and we're getting pretty close to that now so this is the chance now for Theresa May to say I can't deliver anything else I'll have to do no Brexit or no no deal we'll have to leave without a deal and that's going to damage so many countries in Europe they're not going to want that so the leaders of the countries don't want a no deal but I don't think that the people who are doing the negotiation care. Now, Rupert Huck, I mean, last night, the Labour Party backed an amendment which would have legally taken no deal off the table, but it failed. So where does that I mean, leave you? There were you? so many amendments last night. I think mm. there were about seven yeah, different yeah. ones all in a row. But there was, importantly, the one Caroline Spellman, Dame Caroline Spellman, one of, one of Pauline's colleagues, and Jack Dromey, who's Labour. It was a cross-party thing to rule out no deal because the CBI, the TUC, the British Chambers of Commerce, the FSB, Federation of Small Business, so people from all sides are saying just rule out no deal because the damage for our manufacturing, for even the functioning of our country for getting food and medicines would be disastrous. But if you rule out, rule out no deal, surely that really weakens you in the negotiation, which, if Pauline and her colleagues are, are correct, we're getting now into the crucial part of that negotiation. And I think she needs to lift some of these red lines. I think that, you know, what has she been doing for two years? Now we're thinking two weeks this will be sorted. I think that it's not good decision-making to have a gun put to your head, which is what it feels like. Not just is it a blindfold Brexit where we've given her a blank cheque, but it's a blackmail Brexit that she's saying it's her way or the highway. And today she's, got, uh, she's gone to Brussels saying you've got to change something, not that she's going to budge in any way. I mean, it's all a textbook in how to not do a negotiation. And Pauline, it is extraordinary, isn't it, that she spent nearly two years negotiating a deal, came back just a couple of weeks ago and said, this is it, there's no possibility yeah. of changing this and then on Monday night she goes to all the Conservative MPs and says you know what back this amendment to change my deal
deal and then that will help me. I mean, it's well, an extraordinary she, she state of affairs. It is, but she didn't have a choice because she was defeated so heavily. She had to look again and that's what she's done. That's why she's been listening to people all over the political divide and people outside. And that's important that she has... She should have done it probably earlier, but she has done it now and I hope that she can get some movement in the European Union. She doesn't need a lot to get the um, Brexiteers on side. I mean, it would be better if we had a better deal than we've got now, but we'll, we'll go with what she can possibly get, if she can get anything. Rupert, I just want to ask you one last thing. You support a second referendum. That looks further off than ever. Yeah. There doesn't seem to be any kind of majority for that. No a second referendum. The first one was in the 70s when I was a baby, actually. No, no, no. No, no, yeah. but no, what no, I no. Think, 2016, I think. Look, in 2016, <laughs> what happened? That was one day in June 2016. The shape of leave was never defined, so we don't know if people did want to be out of a custody union. We but never knew the word backstop. Nice. It wasn't... It. No, but it's the nature of it, the detail... You didn't know what you were no, no, doing, so do it again on, Pauline, we to all get know it a lot right. More. We all know a lot more. Yes, so I think people with knew. a big decision of this magnitude, we don't know whether they wanted a Norway, the people, whether they wanted the a Canada. I speak to we say do not know. We want it out. So the and best thing all to they do, wanted when this deal comes back at the end, when she's had her bits and pieces We're not having another referendum. Let's go to the people and say, do you still want this? Do you want it or not? And if you don't, it's fine. We can stay with what it's we've got, because we know that works. OK, I'm going to stop you there. Pauline Nathan, Rupert Huck, thanks very much for joining us. Plenty of discussion here, plenty more discussion before this is all settled.